Good morning, everyone. You're listening to Turtle Island News, live with Tracy Kennedy. Hope everyone's doing great today over on Studio A, Revolution Radio. And, of course, TurtleIslandNews.info. I wanted to tell everyone I have a new Facebook page for my more strange, disturbing, esoteric ideas. Trace Elements Radio. So, friend me, (laughs) Tracy Kennedy, and then come and check this out, because sometimes I forget to put up the articles on my page, but you can usually find it there, if not at turtleislandnews.info. Today, there's so much going on. I'm, I'm going to introduce you to some new words, geospatial intelligence, the Thousand Year Reich, which you've heard of, the Matrix, which you've heard of. Um, I will be really butchering the German language, so get ready for that. And I have to ask you something serious. Have you been hearing voices? Did you wake up nauseous today? Because I know it'll sound strange, but there are suddenly stargates being found all over the world. I know, it, it'll sound bizarre. NASA's coming out with these strange, strange things lately that it captured something huge coming out of the super massive black hole. They don't know what it is. I found this strange U.S. patent called a clockwork orange, believe it or not. A method of changing a person's behavior through conditioning unconscious mind towards a desired effect. Strange towers, mysteries being found all over the world, suddenly gigantic lamberts that they're just going to announce and they're just deciding to tell us about it. NASA's coming out with something, I think, either later today or tomorrow about Mars. Um, I don't think they're going to say the aliens, although they may say microbes, which we already know because the first scientist who did got results of the tests there said there were microbes. We know this. We've also been hit by Mars has been chucking balls at us microbes people are spontaneously combusting surge is going heavy metal because the protons were not enough they are going to have now they said heavy lead ions quark gluten plasma yeah the morons aren't you know screwing things up enough but there's there's more. There's these mantras, which are actually portals. These are symbols of the universe, and again, time travel. There's even been one found in Oregon. There's one that's been found in Canada at the bottom of a lake. These things look like they've always been there. But they can't have been. We would have seen them. We've had planes for quite a while, you must admit. Now, some of the things I'm going to bring up, because I was going to go more into the dogmen. Dog Soldiers is a name that... um, It was out of respect that was given to them. But I was looking at their mass the last couple of days because I was going to go more into those stories and I've realized we have the same mass as well all over the world sometimes they're mass sometimes we draw our faces like this sometimes we paint them like this sometimes we chip that into walls caves statues this is Toth so why all of a sudden 
Are we seeing the same things? Oh, and for the people who are looking at Tecumseh, and I have to thank um, Chief Charles Tudock, I did put um, that movie up yesterday, so you can see that. That's part of the story, too. I also put up an interview, ET Languages. I know it's not usually my thing. Mostly I hear that kind of stuff and think, oh good, they're speaking in tongues. They've lost their minds. Except when you listen to Tobias and Jack speak them, it's different than what I've heard before. I know it'll sound odd, but you know these voices. There's so much going on in the planet. Like, I mean, global devastation. The sun just chucks something at us from a nothing flare. Nothing. Except, scientists are starting to admit that, well, we don't exactly know what's coming from the sun right now. What do you mean you don't know? <laughs> you need to know what's coming from the sun, but they don't. There's a solar storm going on right now from nothing. So, one angle of this, because the president, Barack Hussein Obama the second, he's not the one watching you. The satanic elite. Satanic I use loosely. I don't know what these things really are. They have the deepest tr truth and trust in their cyber political robotoids, like Obama, to follow their instruction in blind faith without wavering because he has been programmed to trick the people of the world into a future it's not even future now it's it's on this is on global fascism perpetual war genocide us as constantly sick you know when you look at the Toth mask and again I, I'm pretty sure I put it on my page but if you join me in Facebook you can see the interesting one of the Toth mask is here on this continent. Weird, right? And it looks exactly like the Toth mask. A hook nose. These are um, Cheyenne warriors, part of um, the dogmen. But these ones are contrary warriors. They do the opposite. They have a tendency to even ride their horses backwards, walk back backwards, say no when they mean yes but you know at least they're honest about it they will absolutely make you think now they're kind of looked at as jokers and they sometimes play and do little skits during powwows but these are very old ancient order something that has been put in our mind since maybe the Gishwanta which, you know, my brothers and sisters who have been listening to me for a while will think I mean the two world wampum. I don't. I mean the first land. When we were all at the first land. This land broke apart, yes. But they told us that there were no walking people on this land. I would have to call <laughs> Once again, see, I'm testing my German on you. Um, because there are things that happen. And I think these same things happen everywhere in the solar system. You get water with salt in it. It hits a land. That land is going to have beings on it. Our bodies work like that. Our lands work like that now. Are we remembering from an ancient, ancient, ancient time? Or are they messing with Stargates because next year China finishes theirs. 
they finished their version of CERN, which will be twice as big, probably twice as nasty, as the CERN thing. The big one. The big one in Switzerland. I think they're playing with time. I think that's why I woke up nauseous today. Now, there is, as we know, a clandestine U.S. military intelligence brotherhood that has helped mold, shape, and create Barack Obama. And if you want to see more about that and go into depth, go to my page and type um, Barack Obama and X-Men. They are trolling. They come to our websites. I saw something really strange on our on my page yesterday, and you know, I was it was hurting my feelings. Like I'm not getting trolled. He wasn't mean or anything, but I got a feeling. If I got a feeling, I will pull this show over. <laughs> but they're watching us, surveilling us. You know, back April third, nineteen sixty eight. Dr. Martin, Martin Luther King Jr. delivered one of the most chilling, moving, and prophetic oratories of the 20th century. His theme was, I had been to the mountaintop. It is just as relevant and stirring now as it was at the height of the civil rights and black liberation movements of the 60s. He, God, allowed me to go up to the mountain. I've looked over. I've seen the promised land. I may not be there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we, as a people, will get to the promised land. His visionary-themed promised land is not a mythical or land of fantasy. It's generally, of course, based on Genesis, which we've heard. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over the land, over every creeping thing that creeps on the land. And the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and happiness, which the U.S. Declaration of Independence says all human beings have been given the right by their Creator. Maybe there should be an S at the end of that. And for the protection of which they institute governments. Dr. King stressed that there would be difficult days ahead reaching this promised land. He warned us of violent, lethal gatekeepers. Gatekeepers. Rod iron. Now, you know, the first thing I saw when I read to you months ago of what CERN was going to do next, is they said iron. That's not what they're saying now. So, I'm wondering if wondering if they're lying. Because iron isn't just a red metal. There's a reason why there's wrought iron gates. There's a reason why there's iron bars. This is a spell. It's what iron does. It traps souls. Now, wrought iron gates usually have some sort of protrusion sticking out. It's supposed to keep you away. But you'll notice people behind wrought iron gates aren't always all there, if you know what I mean. They're beautiful. I know they are beautiful. But it nonetheless is a spell. So the gatekeepers, lethal gatekeepers, which still goes back to the dogs, to head a dog that is the gatekeeper, to the next realm, also the gatekeeper of hell. So these gatekeepers blocked people's paths to the other side of the mountaintop. 
Huey P. Newton, Bobby Seal, Stokely Carmichael of the Black Panther Party, often stress at the vanguard, well, to the vanguard, the importance of developing the capacity of loving the people more than you loved yourself to reach liberation. The struggle for black liberation was always for the love of the people. God-given, unalienable human rights. This what we fight now isn't we need to start looking at each other as a family you know we really do and obviously they are attacking people of color but they're attacking everybody everyone has to breathe that crappy air Everyone has to drink this crappy water. Everyone has to eat this crappy food. And if you are getting the special magic fairy dust powdered organic stuff, well, it's expensive. So it must be good, right? Does it look pretty? Is it shiny? Unrealized by many still. The problem is that the global satanic elite maintain that they are the chosen ones created in the image of the gods of Genesis and that the promised land and that the domination over everything that creeps on this earth belongs exclusively to the Aryan bloodlines which are Iranian. And yes, Germans have that too. I saw your little DNA. Now the widely followed secret doctrine, doctrine of the Satanist Blavatsky and Aldous Bailey who came after speaks of a new age movement on earth led by a hierarchy of spirit entities known as ascended masters the great white brotherhood the brotherhood of Lexar the brotherhood of light that oversee the spiritual and evolutionary development of the human race on both an individual level and in terms of the process of global civilization. The secret doctrine maintained that Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, is one of the ascended masters that calls for setting up a global white brotherhood to usher in an early reign of peace and justice and unicorns and fairy tales don't be deceived by the talk of peace and justice here of this global one world civilization because we can see it's not working out that way there will be a selection process and only people allowed in their promised land will carry the mark of the beast Barbara Max Hubbard, I have a picture, is a member of the Rhodes Roundtable Club of Rome and one of the leading advocates of, well, for establishing a U.S. Department or Room of Peace. Luciferian Futurist, director of the Lucius so Lucifer Trust. She has been one of the most visible leaders in the New Age movement for decades. Possibly eons, if you believe in the time travel thing that's going on. Because I still think that they're turning those machines on and taking off a little piece of time. Maybe just eight seconds. Maybe eight minutes, like in that movie. It has something to do with eight. We'll get into that. So in her book, Co-Creation, which we've been told is a good thing, active co-creators in this new world of peace and love and radiation, she discusses the hidden meaning of the revelation of St. John the Divine. Her manuscript was channeled 
by an entity. They say demonic, but it is an entity that she called the Christ light. She quoted from Revelation 6, 8. And I looked, and I beheld a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Hubbard's Christ of Light explain the true meaning of the passage. Out of the full spectrum of human personality, one-fourth is electing to transcend with all their heart and mind and spirit. One-fourth is resistant to election. They are unattracted by life, ever-evolving. Their high self unable to penetrate the density of their mammalian senses. They cannot be reached. They are defective seeds. Now as we approach the quantum shift from creature human to co-creative human, the destructive one, fourth, must be eliminated from the social body. Fortunately you Dearly beloved. So no, that's where that shit came from. Are not responsible for this act. We are. We are in charge of God's selection process for planet Earth. He selects. We destroy. We are riders of the pale horse. Death. We come to bring death to those who are unable to know God. Again, should be an S at the end of that. We do this for the sake of the world. The riders of the pale horse are about to pass amongst you, grim reapers. They will separate the wheat from the chaff. This is the most painful period in history of humanity. You do not have to participate in the destruction. You are to be responsible for the construction which will begin as the tribulation comes to an end. Once in power, they intend to mass murder. At the time they said two billion, but I think it's a much higher number on earth. That they labeled destructive or defective seeds. They already know that the majority of people that they intend to kill and slaughter were people of color. But that includes the Aryan race, because you look at their DNA in the last time slip. It was the Iranians who went north. It was the Iranians who suddenly got the blue eye trait. But it looks kind of like that happened miraculously simultaneously we all carry a recessive gene every plant every animal every thing here on this planet have we always I don't know is it new did they go back and fix that I am just asking the question but this is not just a simple battle between haves and have nots currently being played out everywhere in the world and if you want to see how destructive it's just gotten in the last five months seriously go through my page death we're walking to our waist in death we may not see it me in the pampered Canada and a lot of my brothers and sisters in the state but there are a lot of people going through genocide right now all over the world who are very close to not making it right now Turkey Brazil sorry about that guys okay so what if now this is a big what if (laughs) 
what if these things aren't just a few rich guys? What if they're not? Because our brothers and sisters of fairer skin, melanin recessive over in Europe, just got a bunch of butchers dumped off on their land. At first, you know, my heart was open until I saw coming out of these ships just men. Yes, occasionally we see a child and they make a big deal when they're posed. Dead, of course. But that's... And then they just lost some. They're just gone. Running around. You know, we've talked about the desperation of people. And we're seeing that. People are so desperate in places in Europe that they are allowing themselves to be tested with a new Ebola vaccine. Sure, it was made in Europe. But I don't blame anyone listening to me for that. You had nothing to do with that. Global elite bloodlines, the divine ones, the god, the man-gods, believe that this is their mandate from these secret space gods to have absolute dominion, rule, control over everything and the creeping masses of people on earth. Now, Snowden, White Knight, Sacred Test. Yeah, I'm going to be kicking over the can today. This is someone who, for whatever reason, has chosen to violate a sacred trust for this country. This is from former Lieutenant General James R. Clapper, Jr. Lieutenant General Clapper's use of language in describing the culture surrounding the National Security Agency as a sacred trust is extremely interesting. It would be more comfortable if the U.S. Director of National Intelligence used a more appropriate secular language in describing their obligations as public servants instead of sacred trusts that overshadowed the rule of law of the land, like the Constitution. However, he is describing the betrayal of a sacred trust by a cult member bound to a covenant of secrecy, holiness, or sanctity. Is in general the state of being holy perceived by religious individuals as associated with the divine or the sacred considered worthy of spiritual respect or devotion or inspiring awe or reverence among believers in a given set of spiritual ideas. Reichsfuhrer SS Heinrich Himmler's see I got that part right um, translates most perfectly into meaning Knights of the Holy See. Latin, seeds, seat, sea, and sanctorum, the SS, holy, sacred. I am quite uneasy about the entire Edward J. Snowden affair. Clapper's revealing inference suggests that the U.S. intelligence community is overshadowed by a cult of guardians, knights, if you will, a sacred and secret trust instead of the rule of law and I think that should be troubling to everyone usually within movements a true US enemy's entire life story is completely exposed demonized pillar to post yet we know very little about Snowden his family his background and we know that they had no problem grabbing that other guy you know who I mean who let loose that you know Americans were just slaughtering people over in Afghanistan 
and they beat the crap out of him. We've seen some pictures of that man. Not coming to mind right now, but you know who I mean. What little we know about his father, Lonnie, mother, Elizabeth, older sister Jessica, is that they, each and every one of them, are connected to the U.S. federal government. They appear to be a multi-generational U.S. military industry family. Senator Maryland, a leading U.S. military intelligence community for the NSA, Fort Meade, the U.S. Army Intelligence and Security Command, so this is NESCOM, DIA, Fort Meade, and the Chemical Biological Warfare Nerve Complex Center, Fort Derrick, which we've talked about many times. Snowden's mother, Elizabeth Snowden, is an administrative clerk for Maryland's federal courts. Snowden never graduated from high school and for a few years lived alone in his mom's Ellicott City, Maryland condo. A neighbor said that Snowden came across as serious, studious, not the type to throw a party or even play loud music. His mother, dropping by with groceries about every other week, he had few if any visitors except for a young woman with a Virginia license plate. He has a few years window of lost time again, which seems to happen with these suspiciously empty-eyed looking men. He was trained by the U.S. Army at Fort Benning, Georgia and then became a security guard at the Center for Advanced Study of Language at the University of Maryland, College Park. The center is affiliated with the U.S. Department of Defense and the studies of language needs of the U.S. intelligence community. So he was both a CIA and an NSA agent. Snowden talked about the privatized life living off the land of milk and honey in Hawaii, taking in a six-figure salary with a high school equivalency diploma. Wait, what's that sound? Is that alarm bells? I'm hearing them. It's not just the voices in my head. Now, he talked about trolling dominion, privileged access that he had over millions even the U.S. president, even his so-called glamorous pole-dancing girlfriend, Lindsay Mills, looks and sounds like a classic CIA MK Ultra sex kitten. You sell out long enough, you get a girl. And for the first time in my life, I feel strong enough to be on my own, though I never imagined my hand would be so forced. This is from Lindsay Mills. I don't know how to feel normal. Also Lindsay Mills. Snowden has suddenly become the new mass media darling of revolutionary con consciousness. I've even talked about him many times. But the Snowden affair has given mass media an illusionary false flag to suddenly distract public away from what's going on everywhere. Totally distracted us from people's rebellions in Turkey and Brazil. Distract the public from the extremely explosive situation in Syria. Biological warfare weapons of mass destruction. The U.S. Army the very people they called terrorists. The government spending billions, if not trillions, of taxpayers' funds to protect us against, of course. Now, the more you look at the white knight, Edward Snowden, 
the more he appears like a typical multi-generational, trauma-based, MKUltra, sacrificial son on a white horse set up on some covert military intelligence mission, instead of a revolutionary concerned about liberty and the will of the people. It begs common sense that mainstream media would provide us with this sort of scoop. When the mainstream covers something intensely like this, even Anonymous, Anonymous has been on CNN. Kane, Dragon, BS. So, there has to be a reason. The mainstream media is globalist. End of story. All of it. Its sympathies and its ownership. Thus, it is very likely that some sort of globalist advantage to this unprecedented leaking. It will be hard to unravel. But I'm calling BS on it. Ringing the bells. So, Snowden, taken under the wings of Julian Assange of WikiLeaks, new pinup boy of global investigative journalism, Assange's most important dictatorial and arrogant directive to the masses is that he, the Divine One, knows what is best for the public to know. Now, as far as I know, Assange, the Great Beast 666 and Clapper, one of the Masonic Illuminated. You see them with the Illuminati signs. The Beast, Assange, and Clapper. Picture on my page. Now, I'm constantly annoyed that people are distracted by false conspiracies, such as 9-11, when all around we provide evidence of real conspiracies for war or mass financial fraud. This is from Julian Assange, and they've even given you aliens and gods and contacts now. Juicy, right? So, in other words, that darling of global mass media ignorantly controlled the world narrative and America's Reichstag fire the 9-11 deception inside job and define and determine and spood feed global conspiracies for the masses of the people it appears to me that Edward Snowden Hollywood script may be clandestinely controlled written edited and played out by the U.S. military intelligence, satanic brothership, the divine ones, on the hill. In this case, they control the images and the illusion and the narrative. Listening to your phones, reading your emails, enjoying your little kitten pictures on uh, Facebook should be the least of your worries, to be honest that we are well aware of these things. Yes, we should always be extremely worried about the accesses of the NSA and America's Luciferian intelligence and surveillance state. But keep your eye and focus on Lieutenant General James R. Clapper. He will truly define what the NSA, the U.S. intelligence intelligence community and the elite satanic cabal imperium they call themselves the divine ones they call themselves are really up to what they are planning what they have planned what may be new because how long has this gone on has it been thousands of years or has it been maybe ten are we skipping time? I know, weird ideas. But why are things coming suddenly into our consciousness now? All of us, a huge group of us, 
at the exact same time. Snowden was a diversion to manufacture, manage, and control public perception about Americans' clandestine security, surveillance state. These things they told us about, we already knew, but they presented it like it was new. The notion that we're trolling through everyone's emails and voyeuristically reading them or listening on everyone's phone calls is on its face absurd. This is from General Clapper. But of course they are. Now again, his choice of language and use of the word trolling. He was the one, one of the earliest ones to use it. And now we call people who are rude in the chat rooms trolls. It's extraordinary. U.S. State Department has recently initiated, well, not recently, a couple years ago, 2012, a computer program called Viral Peace to determine and demonize enemy targets. Think of it as a strategic trolling in pursuit of geopolitical ponage for you who are gamers. High five to my nerds out there. So to conquer, to gain ownership. You know, during my impressionable years, elementary student, Peter Christian, and I'm not even going to try his last name, Norwegian fairy tale. Do you guys remember Three Billy Goats Gruff? One of my most favorite stories. Also, a fairy tale that I recall had most often frightened me. Somewhere in the back of my mind, the monstrous troll under the bridge wasn't something fictional. Nightmare or illusion to me, but presented a file in my subconscious of a real veiled obstacle to my future goals and aspirations as I crossed over many bridges of life and struggle in the pursuit of life, liberty, happiness. The troll and the trick trap who's tripping over my bridge haunted me throughout my impressionable years. Now, according to Norse and Scandinavian myths, popularized by Lord of the Rings, trolls are gigantic creatures with a basic humanoid appearance, though they're covered with thick fur or even moss. They have long noses. Look, it's taut again. Are immensely strong, are often naive or easy to trick which is not like Todd. Sometimes they lurk under bridges, as in the classic children's tale, Three Billy Goats Gruff, but we got the watered-down version. Scandinavian stories were pretty darn bloody and graphic. They also can be found in thick woods and in caves, according to pagan myths. They only go abroad at night, because if a troll is caught by the sun, it turns to stone. Again, Lord of the Rings. This is a commonality in North mythology among supernatural creatures. And so well known that Thor once riddled a creature with difficult questions so that it forgot the time and was caught by the rising sun. Thor... the hammer-wielding god, associated with thunder and lightning and storms and oak trees and strength, protector of mankind. Thor is permanently mentioned god throughout recorded history of the Germanic peoples. I didn't know it at the time. In my infancy, I had met many forms of Nordic trolls under the bridge could not stand the light of day.
when we look around at what has happened in the United States, especially at U.S. naval stations, when someone really steps out of line, there's suddenly somebody triggered and there's a shooting. People being slipped doses of mescaline or LSD that drive them into chemical schizophrenia. We've talked about Dr. Cameron and the Fuhrer Adolf Hitler and the hidden hand of the Masonic Illuminati Brotherhood now in the late 40s and 50s. One of Dr. Cameron's, Ewan Cameron, his projects was the attempt to depattern experimental subjects. Cameron de defined depatterning as breaking up existing patterns of behavior. Just like the clockwork orange patent, you can read more about that on my page, by means of partially intense electroshocks, big favor, usually combined with prolonged drug-induced sleep. This is the one that he came up here to Canada to, to do as well. Cameron claimed that he could generate differential amnesia, creating such a state in which a man who knew too much could be made to forget. Had been long a prime objective of the CIA programs. However, Before Cameron was key CIA MK Ultra mind control contractor, it was the SS, the Knights of the Black Sun, the greatest racial mass murderers in history, that mastered the use of mescaline and depatterning. First, they tried it on their own people, so so you know, as military intelligence application tools of human torture. Now, in forty-five. OSS chief and Nazi collaborator Ellen Dules sent Dr. Cameron directly to Nuremberg to study Hitler's close friend and occulted psychic master, Deputy Fuhrer um, Rudolf Hess. He undoubtedly also studied depatterning and electroshock torture and the use of hallucinated drugs, which were surprisingly American. Nazi uh, recruits for Operation Paperclip, of course, slipping back to the United States and work for the CIA. I mean back, because a lot of them were well, German as well, but from America and went over there. Now in '50, Dr. Cameron and a leading psychiatrist at Napa Naval Commander Dr. Um, Renshield Oliver founded the World Psychiatric Association, which was a legitimate and reputable safe haven to harbor their brotherhood, their Nazi, their SS psychiatrists. One Nordic troll under the bridge turned out to be a war criminal. And I'm not even going to try to say this. Humpsten Fuhrer? Actually, I think that's um, pretty close. Dr. Kurt um, Friedrich Ploder, Kirk Schmidt, he changed it later, of the SS um, out of Dachau concentration camp. Now, after the war, there was a fierce competition between the U.S. military armed services to acquire as many of the Nazi SS scientists and engineers as possible for the virtual extinction warfare technologies. The U.S. Navy was eager to snare their share of these criminals, these mass murderers. Now the storyline on the SS Dr. Plotner is that the Navy's technical mission in Europe was hot on the trail of the state-of-the-art Nazi research into interrogation, so torture techniques. The Navy's intelligence officers came across the SS experimental research papers 
on truth serums having been conducted by SS Dr. Plotner beginning in February 1944 at Dachau concentration camp. Now remember by 44. Between the First World War and the Second World War, United, well, we'll talk about the United States later, but specifically England and Germany, but most of Europe, of course, there was a very heavy reprogramming of the people because you guys were thinking too much. This is why I can't believe some of the history they tell us. You look at some of the things that were built in Europe and things that cannot be built now because we can't remember. I'm seeing time slips here. Now, Dachau, that concentration camp. A U.S. Naval intelligence officer discovered that Dr. Plotner had achieved some success with mescaline as a speech, even truth inducing drug, enabling interrogators to extract even the most intimate secrets from the subject when questions were cleverly put. Plotner also reported research into mescaline's potential as an agent of behavioral modification, so mind control. The U.S. Naval Intelligence Officers recruited S.S. Plotner. 45, some people say it earlier, but we'll say 45, permitting him to continue his mescaline interrogation research, this time in the interest of the United States. In spite of being notorious wanted war criminal, the U.S. shielded him and Dr. Joseph Mengele. Behind the veil, U.S. intelligence officers converted Nazi SS war criminal physicians, psychiatrists, scientists as the Brotherhood medical scientific community colleagues. Dr. Harold W. Batchelor of Fort Derrick Division of Biology biological and chemical warfare made a pilgrimage to Nuremberg Tribunal. And we'll continue. Get up, stretch your legs. It'll be even more horrible when we come back. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Oh, let me turn off the music. Okay, so, before I continue, there's also been a lot of news about parallel universes, how they know 100% they exist, how CERN is, I think, already cracked open one. This is, this is why I'm, I'm saying the time slip. Because if you've had a chance to look at the New Earth videos that I've put up, this woman's research is magnificent. And she doesn't show just fantasy ideas. She shows real stuff that's all over the world. In Europe, there are some beautiful buildings that were supposedly built and then a hundred years later guys didn't know how to pour the exact same concrete. They didn't know how to smelt the exact same metals. Her idea is because people from Atlantis came over and taught us. We know that when Europeans en masse started going, not, we know that they've, everyone's traveled all over the world. We've seen images of that. Europe always had people of all different colors, always. We all, all over the world had people of all different colors. You don't go from building a civilization that had beautiful, magnificent aquifers and roads and buildings to not washing in a hundred years. Because societies go in certain ways. They do. We can't just blame Christianity and their 
you know, if if you wash, you're, you're a demon. It's not possible. Societies don't go like this. You don't build magnificent structures until you got your medicine together. You don't get your medicine together till you got your families together. You just don't do that. Our European brothers and sisters, something happened to them, and they could not have been all wiped out. We could not have been all wiped out all over this world. Something happened. Something changed. This is what I'm saying. Parallel universes, they're, they're doing something to us. Changing things. Look at the state of the earth. We've talked about the last hundred years that they tell us, but look at the last four. Something is happening. It has happened before, and they're messing with us more than just our minds. It's like you wake up and the world is suddenly even more horrific. Now, getting back to the story. Behind the veil, U.S. intelligence officers... brought all these maniacs over here. Dr. Harold W. Um, Batchner of Fort Detrick Division, Biological Chemical Warfare, made a pilgrimage, like I said, to the tribunal in Germany to recruit and, you know, pick their, pick their guys. Of course, people who were lower in the military got killed. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna try this name. The Nazi biological warfare specialist Reich Gashunder Heitzfeuer. I think I, I think I nailed that. High five. Dr. Kurt Bloom. Okay, he noted that we have friends in Germany, scientific friends, and this is an opportunity to enjoy meeting them to discuss our various problems. A friend. This fiend headed to Nazi Germany's biological and warfare program of racial mass murder. This is the friend that promised Himmler and the Third Reich, the mother of all biological chemical weapons of mass destruction, to wipe out the Allied forces to end World War II for once and for all to ensure the Nazi victory. Which I'm leaning towards they won. I know. But I... Look who's sitting in England on the throne. Are they not all Germans? Okay, so if we really won the war against the Germans, why are the Germans on the, fl on the throne? Just saying. Okay, so this hidden... American medical and scientific communities friendship this bond of brotherhood this evil this secrecy with the Nazis and the SS is still ever so chilling my fear of the trolls that could not stand the light of day having no childhood fantasy no nightmare nor an illusion Many people under the U.S. Navy's Project Chatter. Project Chatter is still ultra top secret, highly classified, even today, cannot stand this light of day. It is the ultra secret program brought by real Nordic trolls, trolling in America, to block the paths of millions on their journey over the Bridge of Light to their God-given human rights and devour the body and the hearts and the minds and the souls of the people. Most of the secret experiments of Project Chatter involve the Dachau concentration camp experiments. SS Plotner involving SS, satanic, barbaric, and inhumane medical experimentation with masculine, absolutely LSD. They say possibly, I say for sure, and mind control. It also involved 
the insidious electro-convulsive shock experiments of Mengele at Auschwitz. Even in the 20th century, little has come to light about the activities and the whereabouts of Plotner. After he was recruited, which they admit, by the U.S. Navy in 45, to the to the early 1950s, and the Navy's technical mission didn't skip down the yellow brick road to just happen to trip over his research papers. They brought him. Plotner was an SS medical corps officer that was regulated by a blood covenant of secrecy, closely monitored by Himmler and SS security forces. To say the least, it's extremely dangerous to cross Himmler and the SS at any level of this game. The SS medical officer's customary and business procedure was to submit detailed weekly and monthly medical reports on their experiments to Himmler. Himmler stockpiled all of the SS concentration camp experimental medical corps reports. Himmler was uncommonly demonic, absolutely shrewd. This is a psychopath. Shrewd, spoken of as actually personable. People liked him. And so as the war came to a close, Himmler secreted, secreted SS Medical Corps reports in various locations, then after the war released them to those willing to strike a bargain with the devil and Lucifer's servants. Project Chatter and its links to the SS and Plotner's Dachau, Dachau experiments still can't stand the light of day. Most of the experimentation, the things that have happened in the United States are still locked, secret away in the vaults of the Almedia County Superior Court's Kirk, uh, clerk's office in Oakland, California. Any documents, any leaks between superior court files are just not coming out, although Project Chatter is a real thing. These people mean exactly what they say. America left has proven inept engaging the fascist minutes, much less mounting an effective response. Few are aware of the history that brought us to our current predicament. That's from Andrea Hackett. Ms. Hackett continued, in order to fight an enemy, you must know that enemy. You must know their strengths, you must know their weaknesses, history, organizations, links, objectives, capabilities. You must know their operational methods, familiarize yourself with the central players. In short, you must do your homework. In the case of the global fascism, you must also respect their fascism and willingness to use violence to further their goals. Lately, on the internet, sources within Germany have compared the National Security Agency to the Stasi, the Ministry for State Security, German, um, no, I'm not even going to try that one, <laughs> created in 1950, the Ministry commonly known as Stasi, it's an abbreviation for a very long name, they use a lot of vowels together. Who knows? Can't do it. Anyway, it was official state security service for Germany, Democratic Republic, or GDR, known as East Germany. Now, that dog won't hunt. It is an illusion and a hypocritical attempt at mass population through perception. The true history of the NSA and its central players is a puzzle wrapped inside an enigma 
to intentionally strife an effective response from the people. The NSA has its roots in numerous balconies. Reichsfuhrer Heinrich Himmler's Puzzle Palace, the RSHA. I'm sure we've talked about them. Now the RSHA, Reich Main Security Office, or the Reich Security Main Office, or Reich Security Head Office, was um, a state secret wrapped inside a secret state. The RSHA was a security service for the Nazi Germany and the Nazi Party. The organization was completely subordinate to Himmler. In his dual capacities as Chief of German Police and Reichsführer, German, I think, after office, Inland SD headed by Nuremberg Tribunal, convicted mass murderer Otto Ollendorf. Amped three was SS's domestic mass information gathering service inside Germany. It's also dealt with ethnic Germans outside Germany's pre-war borders and mat- matters of culture. In Nazi Germany, Heinrich Himmler and the SS represented the proverbial evil trolls under the bridge, constantly trolling to devour millions on their path across the bridge to life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. The state duty was to fight all enemies of the Reich, inside and outside the borders of Nazi Germany. Now, according to a British author, Gerald Reitlinger, interesting. Oh, look, a German. The RSAH became a typical overblown bureaucracy. Complexity of this was unequaled, with at least a hundred sub sub sections. Its data mining technology and facility was provided by IBM who also makes really good ovens, apparently. In Nazi Germany, Willy Heidinger was a manager of IBM subsidiary Dihomek. During the tour of his facilities by the Nazi party leaders, Heidinger substantially exposed their data mining. The ultimate objective, the physical... um, examines of the human body and deterrents where all organs are working to the benefit of the entire organism. We are very much like a physician in that we dissect cell by cell the German cultural body. We report every individual characteristic on a little card. These are not dead cards, quite the contrary. They prove later on that they come to life when the cards are sorted at a rate of 25,000 per hour according to certain characteristics. These characteristics are grouped like organs of the cultural body and they will be calculated and determined with the help of our tabulating machine. We are proud that we may assist in such a task, a task that provides our our nation's physician Adolf Hitler with the material he needs for his examination. Our physician can then determine whether the calculated values are in harmony with the health of the people. It also means that if such is not the case, our physician can take corrective procedures to correct the six circumstances our characteristics are deeply rooted in race. Therefore, we must cherish them like a holy shrine which will and must keep pure. We have the deepest trust in our physician and will follow his instructions in blind faith because we know that he will lead our people to a great future. Hail to our German people! And this fear. Jeez. So the sub subsection 
of this group even took over German population consensus tabulated by these IBM machines. The con well, the census was one of several population identification systems used to track targeted groups in Nazi state. Taken together, these systems resulted in a distribution of uniform photo identity cards to all inhabitants of the Reich, mandatory under the law of September 10th, 1939. The significance of IBM's German subsidiary IBM machines, card systems, and the Nazi persecution, extermination of pseudo underman um, Unterminsk, I think that's close, subhuman, plural, and its social, political, and religious enemies was revolutionary, satanic, demonic, principled technology. And that concoction cannot be underestimated. IBM's machines, their punch cards, Himmler and the SS control people's families, racial lineage, political, religious affiliations, track their movements by the millions. The SS was able to trace, update its targeted enemies, their addresses, locations, occupations, wealth, associations. IBM's mass population data mining led ultimately to global racial, political persecution and mass murder. They say unparalleled, but they haven't looked to what England did in Africa. But I won't argue. The enemies of the Reich, that Himmler and this RSAH targeted for persecution, isolation, termination, was just communist terrorist. It was the troll that blocked the path to life, liberty, pursuit of happiness of the people of the German, whether Jews, disabled, non-Aryan, Soviet, Poles, Gypsies, Christians, even though a lot of the SS were Christian, Freemasons, homosexuals, in intellectuals, political dissidents, etc., 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 by the millions. The trolls, Himmler, all these guys under the bridge, Nazi Germany, devoured at least 16.5 million souls, likely over 17 million, in these concentration camps. And then we got 3.3 .3 million Soviets, POWs. But this was, this was a mass slaughter that happened. Now, The Puzzle Palace is a book written by James Bamford, published in 1982. See, I thought it was 79, but okay, 82 is fine. It is the first major popular work devoted entirely to history. The Workings of the NSA, America's Intelligence Organization and Service. Bamford's title refers to a nickname for the NSA, which is headquartered again, Fort Meade, Maryland. The Puzzle Palace can also be used to describe any large government building that is monolithic, secured, or confusing to navigate. NSA had its origins 1949 secret order directive from the U.S. Secretary of Defense, Louis A. Johnson. The secret directive authorized the Armed Forced Security Agency, the AFSA, to be umbrellaed an organization. Interesting umbrella organization. Who likes zombie movies? <laughs> Okay, to oversee and consolidate the military intelligence services. Kind of side note, I put a little article up yesterday, I think yesterday or the day before, you can look on the left-hand side and go through, of how, once again, 
your movies have changed. The United States controls the movie industry. You guys got good actors. Gotta give you that. Death. And more death. And demons. And it gets juicy. We might do a whole show on that. But... The AFSA, during the majority of years of its existence, from 45 to 78, largely Cold War data gathering operation without a charter. Lewis A. Johnson is an interesting and kind of peculiar historic character out of the Old South. Johnson, born in Roanoke, Virginia, former national commander, American Liberty League. The Liberty League was a private army of America's Luciferian global elite. The Imperium, the Divine Ones on the Hill, led by Pierre Irene Lamont Dupont. Dupont. And John Jacob Rashkup. Um, Chief Executive DuPont and General Motors, builder of New York Empire State Building. Well, when they say builder, he's not a Mohawk that actually built it. He paid the money. Okay, along with J.P. Morgan from J.P. Morgan and Chase and Alfred P. Sloan of General Motors. Now, the Liberty League, semi semantic anti-black extension although they're not really fond of white people either um, to rise out a growing power global fascism led by Benito Mussolini and of course Adolf the American Divine Ones linked to Nazi Germany wasn't a matter of any fantasy in 38 just months after Nazis annexed Austria, James D. Mooney, head of GM's overseas operation, received the German Eagle with cross. Highest medal Hitler awarded to Nazi Germans' foreign um, commercial collaborators' supporters. In 1933, Louis A. Johnson's America Liberty League umbrella group that led a clandestine conspiracy on behalf of these divine ones, led by Prescott Bush, once again, to overthrow the U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt and the United States government in a coup to implement the fascism dictatorship based around racial pseudo-geopolitical ideas and politics of Mussolini and Hitler. Now, the plot against United States, widely exposed by Major General Smiley Darlington Butler of the U.S. Marines, go Marines, U.S. Security Defense, Lewis A. Johnson, and implemented NSA for Gallen Org Intelligence Service to Red Amok in the States. He was a fascist handmaiden, Patsy of the elite, the Nazis. Now, in March 1949, Louis A. Johnson had succeeded James Vincent Forrestal of Dillon, Reed and Company as U.S. Security of Defense. Two days after Johnson issued a secret directive molding the AFSA into a mass data gathering operation, Forrestal died. Now, I don't know if he fell down an elevator shaft onto some bullets, but it's suspicious. Forrestal was born in 1892, New York, son of humble Catholic Irish immigrants. Forrestal made his fortune with the ruling classes and bloodline divine ones on Wall Street with investment firm Dillon, Reed, and Company. He was introduced into a world of politics and the New Deal by 
his infamous neighbor, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. As Secretary of the Navy, it was Forrestal that proposed the racial integration of the U.S. Navy. Later, as Secretary of Defense, he proposed a full racial integration of the armed forces. He also opposed the creation of the State of Israel. I like this guy. To permanently disrupt the balance of power and peace in the Middle East. I wonder if he noticed they were going to populate it with people who were mostly Polish. Dylan, Reed and Company, had been one of the Anglo-American access companies that made large loans to finance the Nazis. As a former security of, well, secretary of the Navy during World War II and defense secretary after the war, Forrestal had been up to his nose in top secret um, Nazi rat lines, Operation Paperclip and such. However, the more Forrestal discovered about the true details of America's pact with these devils, the more distressed he became. President Roosevelt died 45, April 12th. There is at least one source, closely guarded secrets, that claims FDR was assassinated by a Nazi assassination team that would have cleared a path for the SS underground to infiltrate America completely under more friendly and blood secret circumstances. Forrestal became the odd man out in the presidential administration of Truman. Truman, 33 degree Mason, well Truman was elected in 19... Um, well, he was elected the 97th Grand Master of the Masons of Missouri, served until October 1st, 1941. Truman secretly subjected to the Blood Covenant, to a high order, the Masonic hidden hierarchy of the Knights Templar, Order of Teutonic Knights, Knights of the Black Sun that were st still dominated by Hitler, SS Himmler, um, Reichlicher SS Martin, Berman. Now leading up to his death, Forrestal became far too concerned, disturbed, and very vocal about the fanatical SS Nazi biological warfare science like Himmler and Eric Trump and Reich Gushan Heidfuhr Bloom. Holy crap. See, if I had to speak like this every day, I'd be ticked off too. <laughs> it's secretly implanted and, and bankrolled in America, developing weapons of mass destruction. 49. Clandestine movement of Nazis' top scientists and Himmler's war criminals and the Wunder weapon programs, so weapons of mass destruction, being slipped into the United States was ultra top secret, highly classified information that couldn't stand the light of day. It would have exposed, well, if exposed, it would have opened people's eyes, outraged the world, changed the body politic of America forever. You know, I told you stories of people fighting against this stuff together, all different colors, way before the war, which you didn't want to join. Now, even though Forrestal headed the investment firm of Dow Dillon and Reed, had been absolutely complicit with the Rockefellers, Duels Brothers, and Prescott Bush in a bargain with Lucifer, financing the Nazis, continuing to trade with Lucifer's servants during World War II, he would not have known the full scope and power of Himmler's objectives. It's ultra-top secret wounder weapons. It's biological warfare programs. I, I'm pretty sure he could not have known. However, he was well aware 
of Operation Rusty. It's unfettered clandestine power and authority over U.S. foreign intelligence programs. See did do it in secret Fort Hunt Treaty by the U.S. Pentagon, Joint Chiefs of Staff, the fall of 1945. Forrestal pushed for CIA to undermine and overtake this control that the U.S. government had no real authority over. Additionally, the U.S. Secretary of Defense, Forrestal, had also objected to Truman's administration the earlier move to make the AFSA Consolidated U.S. Military Intelligence Gathering Agency in the control of the Gulen Org. German. However, way too late. Himmler's Knights of the Black Sun. The world's greatest. Well, I don't know if the world's greatest demons, but maybe this time around. Who knows how many times we've done this crap. What if we've never done it before and this is the first time we're doing it? It sucks and I hate it. Either way. But it was secretly embedded within the power structure of the states. Forrest all knew. Too much to be left to live. Truman forced Forrestal to resign and into military mental ward at the National Naval Medical Center, Bathsheba, Maryland. Apparently he went there because he was really tired and he worked a lot. They said he was tired because of excessive work. And because of excessive work, his bathrobe cord was wound tightly around his neck. And he tripped out of a window onto some rocks. Nothing suspicious there. So anyway, sparrow-faced man in battle fatigue uniform of an American general clambered down the steps of a U.S. Army transport plane at its arrival in Washington National Airport, 1945, two weeks after the surrender of Japan, three months after German capitulation. The general was hustled into a van with no windows and was to Fort Hunt outside the capital. There he was attended by white-jacketed orderlies. And the next morning, fitted with a gray dark business suit from one of Washington's men's stores. Himmler and his personal emissary, who I'm not even going to attempt, had been true architects, engineers of America's Cold War with the Soviet Union. Now according to an official, who I'm not even going to say, Himmler's foreign policy strategy, nearly 44, was to intensify the struggle against the Soviet Union, if possible through a joint operation with the Japanese to convince the West that weakening or destroying the Soviet Union was in their interest. Even though the Un Soviet Union backed the start of the United States. So Himmler plotted the Cold War strategy as a means for the Allies to compromise a peace plan cloaking the RSAH with a false mission as westerly ally to weaken and destroy the communist Russia. Himmler also had a pretty powerful bargaining chips to sway the West to an ultra-secret compromise. He controlled access to the Wunder weapons, atomic bomb, etc., P-2 rocket projects, personnel, atomic submarines, jets, important medical neuroscience, um, biological patents, alternative theory sciences like mind control and electromagnetic projects. Project Shamrock was a major Cold War clandestine espionage program that started 
August 45, simultaneously with the red carpet arrival of Gulen, Adolf Hitler's chief security officer, um, intelligence officer, against the Soviet Union in America. Now, Gulen had been subordinate to Himmler, working out of this RSAH, Soviet Union's desk, an espionage network. Now, the Reinhardt um, Gellin Org, in charge of America's foreign policy and intelligence agenda, was made up primarily of Hitler's general staff, Himmler's fervent RSAH, SD, and I'm not going to try that one. It's a security service. It's the SS. Shamrock involved the accumulation of telegraphic data entering and exiting the United States to primarily monitor, promote the fear of domestic Soviet Union espionage activities contrived, veiled by Himmler. They made it up. Shamrock would have given access to the U.S., the secret U.S. military diplomatic congressional cables, which would have compromised and leveraged entire nation. So the AFSA and its successor, the NSA, were given direct access to daily microfilm copies of all incoming and outgoing and transmitting telegrams via the Western Union associates like IATT and RCA represented almost all of the international telegraphic traffic in the United States. NSA basically operated with no charter, no oversight, no check and balances or warrants. Their job was to gather and mine data, turn it over to National Security Council, FBI, IRS, Secret Service, U.S. Military Intelligence, maybe the White House. Now, 69, you have Richard Nixon officially chartered a project called Minaret, directing government agencies to collaborate in targeting a White House watch list of enemies, primarily from data gathered and mined by the NSA. The NSA actually operated Minaret between 67 and 73, collecting information, of course, civil rights, black power, anything anti-war, demonstrations, military deserters, anyone involved in the anti-war movement. They targeted over 5,000, almost 6,000 foreigners, over 1,000 organizations, U.S. citizens, including included on the White House project, Minaret watched these lists. Over almost 4,000 reports on the watch list of Americans alone. Nixon White House watch list was only a sub-level government directive or a balcony of Shamrock in this puzzle palace. Now Shamrock was an important exposed till 75. The Congress began to investigate and expose this program. Senate Intelligence Committee Chairman Senator Frank Church concluded Project Shamrock was probably the largest government interception program affecting Americans ever done. But don't be fooled. NSA still alive and trolling. All profiles of citizens because if the Nazis did this you can imagine what they got on you. So it's used daily, primarily clandestine, clandestine control, racial, nationalities, politics, religion, dissonance, businesses, resources, trace, and 
update targeted populations, groups, individuals, wealth associations, addresses, locations. Uh, they got all your naughty pics. <laughs> they have all your naughty pics now. The neurologically interactive technologies. The right of a person to liberty, autonomy, privacy for his or her own intellect is situated at the core of what it means to be a free person. This principle is what gives life to some of our well-known or well-established cherished rights. Today, as new drugs and other technologies are being developed, augmenting, monitoring, manipulating mental processes, it is more important than ever to ensure our legal system recognizes and protects these liberties as a fundamental right. Center for Cognitive Liberty and Ethics Frequently Asked Questions 2003 Now back in 2010, Barack nominated retired Air Force Lieutenant General James Clapper of Lucifer's U.S. military intelligence community as Director of National Intelligence. The Director is the official subject to the authority, the direction, the control of the President, who is responsible under the Intelligence Reform and Terrorism Act 2004, serving as Principal Advisor to the President the NSC, Homeland Security, and intelligence matters related to material security, national security. He's Lieutenant General Clapper is weird, scary, creepy dude. Not much is revealed about him personally, publicly. He usually moves deeply in the shadows of military intelligence. His thirst for power, though, and more raw forced into him I don't know he's a troll under the bridge a master of deception over 30 years he has been clandestinely at the forefront at the tipping edge of neuroscience and computers robotics cybernetics mind control technologies to dominate the urban battlefield his fervent Crusader in America's corporatist surveillance state that seek new means to elicit compliance control over, well, every, everything and everybody as a biological science scrutinized under the rubrics of national security. He has been a troll under the bridge undermining human cognitive liberty by secretly militarizing life, biological science, to blur and manipulate the distinctions between human and machine. For decades, he has been linked behind the veil, developing brain-machine interfaces, neural prosthetics, to manufacture vertical, virtual, living robots, subservient to these demons. Now General Clapper is positioned as the DNI of America's surveillance security intelligence state is almost equivalent to Himmler's position of ultimate command of the RSAH the puzzle house the guy we've not heard of so you want to talk about the real matrix the American puzzle house he has authority power to coordinate and control command 16 U.S. intelligence agencies from the CIA to the NSA to the FBI to the National Geospatial Intelligence Agencies. The real matrix? This geospatial intelligence is uncommon, unusual terms that may be still unfolding as we speak. The definitions and usage of the terms of geospatial data, 
geospatial information, geospatial knowledge are unfolding and not used consistently in surveillance intelligence gathering. The CIA explains geospatial intelligence as follows. A picture is worth a thousand words. A lesson every intelligence officer learns. Everyday satellites in the sky captures the comings and the goings of nations around the world. These images may provide missing piece to the puzzle that will help keep the nation safe. You feel safe now? I feel so warm and fuzzy and safe. Hug me. Geospatial intelligence. The intelligence community refers to the use and the analysis of geospatial information to access geographically referred activities on Earth, so everything everywhere, as geospatial intelligence, G-O-I-N-T. It is everything you see or know about the Earth. Geoint consists of all imagery, likeness of any natural or man-made feature, as well as location. Imagery intelligence. Information derived from interpreting imagery. Geospatial information. Information that identifies a natural constructive feature on the Earth by its geographical location and characteristics. The National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, the NGA, is a prime producer, functional manager for national and applied geoint efforts of the IC. CIA analysis use the NGA products to complete their analysis of situations in a finished intelligence. <laughs> the NGA and Defense Advanced Research Project, DARPA, have been quietly collaborating to perfect global satellite software programs, services, Carina, Windows 10, Jade Helm, ongoing, to collect geospatial data. This is the global mind. This is geospatial information. This is geospatial knowledge of the brain and the computer Electromagnetic Frequencies DARPA, agent of U.S. Department of Defense, against you, stop thinking, responsible for development of new technologies for the use of the military. DARPA and the NGA have been awarded research and development contracts under DARPA's Urban Reasoning, Geospatial Exploration exploitation technology called urgent nice a program to map and interface with the human brain from the sky you can look this up as seeing your brain military geospatial technology urgent's primary um, contractor Lockheed Martin developing objective recognition via brain inspired technology orbit that seeks to merge neuroscience with computers to create a technology, 3D mapping systems, that promises to deliver situational awareness anywhere on Earth. Under urgent, SPADAC, a McLean, Virginia defense contractor, has been developing a program called Signature Analysis. It promises to deliver an interface a system that would deliver powerful and actionable insights combining predictive analysis with spatial information as well as the human terrain. Didn't they just conquer the human terrain? And social networking. Hmm. Artificial. To artificially improve and enhance the global operation and the business challenges to warfighter and counterterrorism. Additionally, under Urgent, Lockheed Martin and the partn partner Numenta, a software company, are working on a, site, a suite 
of software applications, Numenta platform for intelligent commuting based on hierarchical um, temporary memory. HTM, a computing paradigm that mimics the structure and function of the human neocortex, the areas of the brain that ha hires high-level thought. Isn't that nice and cozy? Do you feel hugged? <laughs> uh, the story is far from over. Thanks for checking me out today, and please join me Tuesday for more Turtle Island News with Tracy Kennedy. Bye for now.